Warning, the following content that you about to receive is two motherfuckers in here cussing. If your ignorant ass kids and found this fucking podcast and you don't know how to do the parental settings of this shit, that's shame on you as a parent. You got to do better. Viewer you discretion is advised, motherfucker. Hulk Hogan, we coming for you, nigga. Let me get this quick started. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, man. We back at it. We back at it. You got you, you find the flags in the background? Let's man, the flags up. in the background, man. The flags in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I rock with what I rock with, man. You know, you know. But, uh, yeah, man. What's been, up? What's been up with y'all, man? I know this is our pre-show open, but we ain't been on here in a minute. <laughs> I know, right? It's, it's been a minute, man. We had to, like like I said on the uh, on the Best Of show, man, We life has been lifing. But it's been some good life in though. Dude, Can't complain. Dude. Cannot dude. complain. <laughs> life, life has been life in. <laughs> I don't know how the best way I can say it. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, hey, shout out. So funny. Shout out to Scott from uh, the I Only Listen to 90 Music podcast, man. So it, as uh-huh. a, in, in the midst of it, uh, the renovation that we got going on, uh, right. we had one of the homies that was helping also work on the renovation, help us move some stuff. So right. uh, Scott came through with with my homie. So we didn't realize we had a mutual homie. But, uh, you know, when I saw I'm like, I'm like getting stuff together. I'm working. I'm like, oh, what's up, man? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. Right. And I stopped. And I'm like, well, you know, he started talking. And I'm like, I heard that voice somewhere before. So then. I go back and I'm like, hey man, he's like, hey man, and we're like, oh shit. <laughs> so shout out to him, man. We got St. St. Louis, St. Louis is this big, man. It's this yep. that big, man. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Boy, we boy, we got a lot to talk to y'all today, man. <laughs> man, we got a lot to talk about, man. But hey, you know, one of one of the things, one of the things that's been going on, man, you know, I've been I got I got a promotion at the gig, you know what I'm saying? Oh, so congrats, that's man. Man, appreciate yeah. it, appreciate it. Basically, yeah. the promotion is just so they can pay me exactly what I'm owed and worth, and they can point to it and be like, that's why. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but, man, one thing one thing that I've seen, man, you know, like, okay, being in more of a leadership role and stuff like that, man, sometimes you have people on your team that's just, you know, they, they hella cool, they hella cool, but, like, man, they don't know how to, you know, they, they don't talk about what the rest of the team talking about. Like, they, all, they need to be talking about something and they just come out of left field with something else. For example, man, right. you might be in a meeting or something like that and it's just like, yeah, you know, you know, really good work working on this feature, doing that. Yeah, I think the client will really, you know, like this thing that we working on. Uh, yeah, hey man, what you think? And they come out of left field like, hey man, y'all ever uh, boo-boo until y'all turn cold? Man, what the fuck? <laughs> everybody, everybody be like, what? They're like, no, 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 no. But check it out. Like, because, you know, like, if if we had a feature that warmed up the phone in their hand, when that happened, then it would help out. And everybody else would be like, all right, okay. Uh, uh, you, uh He's fired. <laughs> we take what we want, and after we take Lex Luger and the child, we want the gold, sucker. Hulk Hogan, we coming for you, nigga. For you, nigga. For you, nigga. <laughs> nigga. We take what we want. We the realest and the best. We want the gold, sucker. Hulk Hogan, we coming for you, nigga. We take what we want. We the realest and the best. We want the gold suck. Hulk Hogan! We coming for you, no. We take what we want. We the realest and the best. We want the gold suck. Hulk Hogan! We coming for you, no. We take what we want. We the realest and the best. We want the gold suck. Hulk Hogan! We coming for you, no. Come for you, no. We are back. We coming for you, Cass. And guess what, man? Hey, check this out. This is also episode 50. Of the week this is episode UKS. 50. The first episode this is episode 50. <laughs> episode 50. Which which is phenomenal. I think we went from we went from like episode like 15 to 49 
in the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so we've been, we've been putting in work and we're going to put in some more work this year. But first, before we get started, we get into what we got to talk to y'all about. I am RVS. Y'all can find me at Franchise 06. It's F-R-A-N-C-H-I-C-E-06. All social media platforms and my homeboy, co-host, Right over chair is. Oh man, y'all already know. Y'all already know what it is. This, this shit ain't nothing changing. I'm still doing it for 2022. Gotta bring it in locks. I ain't doing it wrong. Uh damn, how did it go? <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> on the number 8 TD underscore R on all social media. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since that dude has been on TV. Yeah, too, it's been so, a while since this dude been on TV. So I forgot <laughs> when. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure y'all check us out. Continue to check us out. Social media at WCFYCast. That's TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Make sure you hit us up. We coming for you, WrestleCast fans on Facebook. Uh, email us. We coming for you, cast gmail.com. And do not forget about pro wrestling black dot org. <laughs> <laughs> we still got that domain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> All right, so before we get into it, man, we got a lot of we got a lot of listener oh. comments, mainly oh, mainly God. because the last episode of 2021 was the second annual John Jones's <laughs> Freedom <laughs> Memorial <laughs> Battle Royal. So we had some comments. We had a bunch of people going in on who they think should win the Memorial Battle Royal. So I'm gonna start with Instagram. Uh, shout out to the homie Jan no, at oh, no up, Jan? 16. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said Jericho and Overeem going out sad. What? <laughs> oh, hold on. First, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me refresh. Let me refresh the people on the long list of candidates for the the, the <laughs> battle royal here. Okay, please read so, that list. Course, sir. Read the list. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's like a list of Jericho. And speaking of Jericho, the first people on the list were the people who took PTO to commit treason <laughs> on January sixth. <6th. laughs> oh, and, and sidebar, and, ladies and gentlemen. We have a new award for this podcast, sir. That we oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It is on the docket. It's ready to go. <laughs> we have a new award. <laughs> so so I'll say this. If you expected us to talk about something early, wait until we get to the awards, because that's when we're going to circle back to it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yep. All right. So we also got... We got Ryback for calling out wrestling <laughs> champion, or sorry, for calling wrestling championships fake when fans suggested he should have been world champion. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, Chris Jericho again for uh, falling off and supporting Trump and doing Fozzy shows in the middle of the pandemic, and then also the one that I forgot about when Tuss started putting this list together, not telling people he got Rona when he did, <laughs> and then coming back later and being like, "Man, it wasn't that bad. I had Rona." This, this, not to mention the, the sidebar that we didn't put on there. That man wrestled at AEW every single week during yes, the pandemic did. era. Yes, he did. Every single week. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. There you go. Did. We 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 got Bow Wow for lying about training for WWE. <laughs> Wait, I didn't even let you say it. As soon as you said Bow Wow, this is funny. <laughs> Yeah, bow wow. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, Jim Cornette for insinuating that women wrestlers don't own their spots and they only get their spots from fucking somebody else. <laughs> Jim Cornette being Jim Cornette. Uh, Jim we Cornette got Randy Jim Orton. Cornette. Yes, yes. We got Randy Orton and Soldier Boy for their Twitter beef. God. That was a classic. Yeah, it was. It was. It that was. was a classic. <laughs> We got uh, we got Drake Works, uh, NXT referee, for taking PTO to commit treason. Number one, and being being an anti mask conspiracy theorist. Number two, and then getting himself fired from NXT. <laughs> <laughs> but put a pin in that. He might come back this episode too. Right, he might come right. back in a little bit. Right. So we got NXT for having multiple Rona outbreaks. Yeah, just multiple yeah, okay. outbreaks. Yeah. yeah. Um. We got NBC Universal for buying WWE streaming rights without knowing how much racism they have to edit out. <laughs> <laughs> four, four billion dollars and didn't know how much they had to clean up. <laughs> they still don't got everything on people. No, no, they don't. And they're not. They're not going to. They're not going to. Like, for real. Like, yo, uh, 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 what was that? Uh, Smoky Mountain. 
That, you know, that's that's enough right it's there. Gone. <laughs> the it's whole, gone. It ain't. It ain't. That ain't coming back. You look nope. for that. It nope. ain't coming back. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got Mark Carano for sending Mickey James her belongings in a trash bag after she got released. It's funny how everything comes back a line and come back around. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're coming back we'll to that, to that. Too very, very shortly. <laughs> uh, Buff Bagwell for getting into a hit and run accident, lying to the police of using the case and then using the case to promote an autograph signing at Big D's flea market. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, got, we got we got the whole pro wrestling at the ambassador. Hey, oh, get hey wait a minute. Hey, I watched that. Segment. I think I watched it like five times. <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> My reaction was just on brand for that. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to the homie. Shout out to the homie Zulu, man. <laughs> We might actually we might actually run into him soon if if, if Omicron don't shut everything oh, down again. God. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, bro. These are yeah. jokes. These are jokes, but that shit yes. was funny. Hey man. man. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious, dog. You can't get mad at us for that. Uh so <laughs> we got the GoFundMe platform for allowing someone to collect money for Baron Corbin <laughs> during his storyline. Yeah. Uh, we got <laughs> We got AEW for showing the Domino's Pizza commercial right after a Nick Gaines pizza cutter spot. That was classic. That was classic. That was, <laughs> that was amazing. That was great. <laughs> we got Alistair Overeem for homophobic comments about wrestling. Can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> we got Jonathan Coachman for complaining about Vince McMahon owing him somewhere between $8,000 and $20,000, not right. knowing the exact amount, and right. then going on adfreeshows.com to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> not even trying to make his money back. Right. And of course, last but not least, we have the namesake of the award, John Jones, for being overall ridiculous the day he got inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming you want to know who do I have winning winning the Battle Royal? You will, would you like to know my pick of who's winning the Battle yes. Royal? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Rated R has called it. Rated R is going to give you the the person who wins the John Jones's Freedom Memorial Award for 2021. Yes. The winner of the John Jones's Freedom Memorial Battle Royal for the whole year of 2021, for the entire year, I'm sorry to say, is uh, Tyron Woodley for fighting Jake <laughs> Paul and getting knocked out. He wins the and he went. It was a surprise entry. He was number 30 into the Rumble, into the, into the Rumble and, and and he he won by a It wasn't even close. Tyrone Willie, you win the you win. The, as a matter of fact, the award might get changed to your in your Ooh. namesake because he he basically y'all know the story, man. If you if if you haven't been watching the shit, dude, <laughs> do you know that this dude Jake Paul bought this dude a watch, a Rolex watch? They were sitting down and why bought a Rolex watch, and he was like. Hey yes. man, thank you for the watch. Why are you giving the watch? Because it's time for me to knock your ass out. And proceeded to knock him out. Knock his ass out. Not only that, now, the first fight, the first fight was bad enough, right? Yeah. Because because Woodley took that stupid bet that he was gonna get a <laughs> tattoo of Jake Paul's name on him, on his actual body, an actual real tattoo, if yeah. he lost. Then he lost. And okay, cool. Woodley, you a man of your word, you got the tattoo. Okay, that was number one. But then number two is getting knocked clean. Clean. The fuck out. <laughs> clean the fuck out. Duh. I, I would I listen, I didn't pay for the fight, right? But I was mm-hmm. looking at the results, like refreshing my, my timeline on Twitter, and then I just saw somebody say, uh, Jake Paul just knocked this KO Willie. And I thought it was a troll. And then they kept going, mm-hmm. and they kept going and going and going. I said, mm-hmm. no. And then you text me and was like, yo, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, please don't let it be true. <laughs> oh, it was true. It was damn true. Shout out to Kurt Angle, man. Oh. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> man. Oh. Uh, yeah, man. He wins the award for the year, man. I'm sorry, for the entire year. For the entire year. For the entire year. Came in at number surprise entrant into the to the the the, 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 the memorial battle royal 
and came yep. in a clean house. He he threw he threw he threw right back over the rope. Then he threw. Yep. Then the last person he just threw, John Jones actually just stepped out and got us. Hey, homie, you got it. He just got up and left. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm gonna sit this. I'm gonna sit this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait till next year. I'm gonna get back get back at it next year. I got you. <laughs> so actually, actually, shout out to the shout out to the homie Ali Oop for uh-huh. also adding Taiwan Willie to the mix of, yeah. of the award. Now, another honorable mention, another honorable mention. I feel like we got to talk about this segue. Uh, Informer on, on, on YouTube said, what about one for Big E being a paper champion? Oh, no, no. I don't think he was a paper champion, man. I don't think he was a paper champion. I, think, <laughs> I had to get your thoughts on that one. Yeah, no, Big E, Big E actually tried to make like he was putting it onto a role to make it main, like make the champion mainstream again. He went to right. he went to a NCAA game. He announced Tyson, uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. He took yep. a picture with Demetra Obelor. Ob- yep. <laughs> right. People went crazy for uh, dude. He's dude. He 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 was like a mainstream champion. Like what? Like exactly. with a face, Like he did what? Cena was trying to do, or like what what the champ, like the pro wrestling champion would do, going on to other stores exactly. and branching out, trying to get the right. uh, the casual fan. Yo, man, I gotta give props out to that because that's what the and props out to WWE for putting them in that in that landscape to do that because that's what yep. you're trying to do. That is epi- uh, the epitome of what they're trying to do is how to get yep. casual, and they did they did that a uh, great they did a great job of that. I'm sorry, they did in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, for sure, one hundred percent, man. I think I think what what Informer is going off of. I saw numbers flying around and all this about uh, uh, when, when he lost the title. Like he had like seven losses or something right. like that. Right. Um, you know, as champion. Uh, but you're absolutely right, man. He put a bunch of he was out there with the mainstream. He was out there everywhere. Right. Um and, and I'll tell you one thing: Brock ain't finna do none of that. Nope. Nope. He not. Brock ain't finna do none of that. You know. I mean, let's. Hmm. Let Let me ask you this question. Is Brock Lesnar, now we know, we know Brock Lesnar. We know Brock Lesnar. Is Brock Lesnar a mainstream wrestling star? I think he has the potential to. Two casuals. Let me think, exactly. I'm about to say two casuals. I'm not not talking about like MMA fans. I'm talking about anybody tangential to wrestling, like people who don't know wrestling is what started them. I mean, to me, I think that'd be up to Brock. That'd be up to Brock if he wants to go down that avenue. Like, I can't sit here and tell you say yes or no because the only he would know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I can all I can go off of what I've seen, uh, what I've seen, and what he said to people. And Brock say he don't like motherfuckers. He don't like people. <laughs> proud of people. So, but just but but him winning that belt back in Atlanta, taking pictures with the fans. I don't know, man. Like it, it look to me, I don't know what it is about Bro- Brock looks. Like happier now. Does it make like to me? Yes. <laughs> it looks like yeah. he's. Like, I'm ball. pretty sure it's that big ass check he got at the WWE mm-hmm. releasing eighty motherfuckers <laughs> during the whole 2021. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he got a fat ass check. But Brock, to right. me, Brock looks. It looks like he's happy with what he's doing in his life right now. Right. So yeah, who's this? I don't know. It could. It could happen. We could see. It could happen. Yeah, I mean, I I, I agree with you on that. Like Brock is having a ball, Brock. Like having fun makes his segments more fun. Yeah. Like I, you know, I, I'm still, I'm still in the camp of okay. I'm not watching the three hour. I'm not watching the whole nope. show. But when I watch highlights of Brock, even with him and him and Lashley, like I was just like, yo, this dude is having fun. I've never seen this dude have fun before. Right. I've never seen this dude talk that much in right. his entire career. So, right. Yeah. Shout out to him. Uh, you know, having a ball there. Also, shout out to the homie Joey Cash music. So okay. Joey Cash, he's a he's a Mizzou cat. Um, oh, okay. You know, a little bit, a little bit younger than me, but he was one of the people that they shared his video with Brock. Oh, everywhere. okay, okay. So he was the cat that ended up on Sports Center and uh, uh, Bleacher Report, all that. So shout out to Joey Cash. That's what's um, up. But I think, <laughs> and I, I want to say this: I think the answer to the question of if Brock Lesnar is a mainstream wrestling star is no, and it hints at exactly what you said. I don't think Brock want to be. You yeah. know what I'm saying Brock is Brock is one of those cats that. If he could still perform at a high level in MMA or football or anything like that, he'll be doing that. Right. But now he's just like, yo, I don't really have to get super hurt to do sure. that. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going right. to get my check and I'm going to go back to the mountains, bro. Yeah, yeah. 
Hey man, I gotta give a shout out to this dude that I, that I was. I went to CES this year, uh, and then I had a, yeah. I had a. I was at the MGM Grand and had an opportunity to talk to one of the Skycaps who actually worked at the MGM Grand. He said he worked there for like fifteen years. So I just got oh, to talk. I was like, "Oh man, you seen?" He's like, "Man, you." I'm like, "You have to have seen all kinds of stuff." He's like, "Oh yeah." He's like, "Man, I've seen." Uh, <laughs> He's seen, he seen when John Jones and Daniel Cormier were throwing shoes at each other. He saw that. He saw, he saw Floyd Mayweather and Pacquiao. And then he said, uh, going to the bathroom, he ran, he walked into Brock Lesnar. And he said he was a cool dude. That's <laughs> so, cool. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I, for, I forgot your name. I should have took your name down. But, man, the dude, dude said he's worked there for 14 years. So I know I know he saw some shit. So I had to, I had to talk to him. I had to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, think, and I think that's also the thing. I don't think, I don't think it's as much as Brock doesn't like people. I think Brock is... You know, he seemed cool. He seemed like he liked people. I don't think he liked media and yeah. cameras and interviews and all the... And, and you know what? I get him, dog. Right. I wouldn't like that either. Right. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. But my, my, here's my question I want to give to you is, is how come Brock mm-hmm. is always one of the people that's taking the belts off the New Day? Xavier Woods but not get no strap. He gonna get his ass beat by Brock Lesnar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro! It actually goes. It actually goes that. deeper than that. <laughs> yes, yes. So it actually goes deeper than that. Brock, like Brock, has six WWE championships. It's not counting Universal. Six WWE championships. Uh, four. What was it? No, no, no. Three out of his six are from beating the Black Champion at that time. <laughs> so when he beat, he beat Rock. He beat Rock for the uh, undisputed championship. Right. He beat <laughs> Kofi, and now he's beat Big E. The only one left is Bobby Lashley. And guess who we fighting at the Rumble? You fighting Bobby Lashley. <laughs> now, now, and we can go ahead and segue into the Rumble if we want to right now. But we got, well, first first and foremost, this is a, you can't spell wrestling without STL. Yes, because sir. If you didn't know. Act you like didn't you know. know. <laughs> act like you know. Act Royal like Rumble you know. is in St. Louis. Yes. St. Louis, January 29th. Uh, yes. We're going to be in the building. I'm baby. buying my hazmat suit. Baby. Exactly. Baby. I'm buying my hazmat suit <laughs> as we speak. You know, there's, there's new developers that say uh, uh, certain things might protect you. I don't believe it, but I'll nope. try. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I might, I'm looking for that helmet. That helmet, uh, shout out to, uh, to Lana, you already know. That helmet, I want to wear that helmet that your mom's got that cover your whole head. <laughs> she going to laugh when you hear this shit. But she, oh, I'm no. going to get that helmet. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, no. The black question mark is calling. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh, we have, okay. we have an incoming. What's up, black question mark? You on the podcast. You said what? What's up, black question mark? You on the podcast. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, y'all? Yes, what's up? What's up, man? Hey, we just wanted to get y'all shooting. Yeah, we 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 sh- no, we shooting on the podcast, man. What you up to? Okay, not much, man. It's up at Apple, about to buy me a MacBook Pro. You know, trying to improve my, my podcast. So there you go, there you go. There Shout you go. out to there you, you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're trying to be like y'all, man. Move up, move up like y'all, you know. Man, no, man, he better than us. He better than us. <laughs> he better than us, man. We ain't nothing. <laughs> let me get back let me get back to the recording yeah, bro all right yeah. yep <laughs> black, black question mark black question mark don't make sure <laughs> you ain't gonna find it yeah. you're gonna find black question mark podcast but <laughs> it's out there uh but yeah man so we got we got the royal rumble coming up in st louis man you know like i said ppe i'm i'm trying i, I ain't trying to be out there just just raw faced in nobody's arena out here raw, out here raw dog in the air Getting your raw nope, dog in the air. No, air. no protection. Nope. nope. That's all right. Nope. <laughs> no, what's up? No, what's up? No, what's up? But we talked about it already. So we got Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. The match is finally, finally going to happen for the first time ever. What you got on Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley? I think we're gonna see a dog fight. I think I think mm-hmm. this fight, this is gonna this match is gonna be stiff. I'm sorry. Yep. They're gonna be professional. Yep. But they both come from that MMA background, and I think they're probably exactly. like, "Yo, hey, let's put leave it all out there. We'll apologize when we get back here and get this check." But right, what you trying to do? I'm shocked. I'm shocked Vince didn't think about like pulling the trigger, actually making it like a of a real shoot. 
Like for real. Like they're gonna tear up yeah. they're gonna tear up that whole arena. The, the the out they should just tear up everything. The ring should collapse, the barricade should fall down, the Titan Trine should fall, the the little dry the little sound strips from the top of the dome should be <laughs> falling off the shit. I don't even know why. It should it should just be like they should rip up the fucking mat and you see their bootleg ass. They should show like turf of the motherfucking uh, Battle Hawks logo on their <laughs> <laughs> it's it's to me it's just a, the fight it needs to be a fight a fight yes. yeah oh yeah man that would I mean that's that's what I'm looking forward to WWE has disappointed me so many times in the past so it's like all right I'm holding off what I you know I don't want to see no thirty second no F five get out of there none of that no. I want to see a Fight. fight. I want to see a fight. <laughs> and even going further, even going further, I want my prediction to, to, to come full circle. Uh-huh. Hey, man, I want this to be Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley one. Bobby Lashley gets the win. Yeah. So then eventually Brock Lesnar can beat him again and have beat all the black champions. <laughs> because you know what? I'm okay with that if Bobby Lashley gets one win over Brock Lesnar for a championship. Yeah. I ain't gonna be mad at that at all. We about to be all the black WWE champions. That's what we got, man. That's that. I damn near want to say he beat all the black champions except Ron Simmons. He did. Uh, did he fight Ron Simmons and Ahmed Johnson? <laughs> That's it. That, 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 oh, yeah. could you imagine that promo with Ahmed Johnson and Brock Lesnar doing a promo? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Brock, the sooner the shot is shot. <laughs> that, that would be some classic TV, man. <laughs> man, man, oh man! Somebody, somebody would get hurt, and not yep. for the right reason. <laughs> somebody but, would just get dropped on their head. Yeah, but yo, yo, having a rumble here in St. Louis, oh, at the dome, I, sh- I the didn't dome. see that coming. I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> no, nah, man, no. Nah, and, and you know what, though, though, I don't, I don't even know if we talked about this on the podcast, but. uh WWE did it in a very, very like smart, slick way. So they actually waited until the day. So AEW Full Gear was supposed to be here, right? Mm-hmm. Which shout out to Tony, <laughs> shout out to Tony Khan for walking out at the beginning of uh, AEW Rampage. I was here in November. <laughs> First thing he said was, "Hey y'all, I'm sorry, man. You know, hey, we had. I sorry, I had to move Full Gear, but I was against. I was up against Canelo, and I was up against USC. That wasn't gonna be good for us, so I had to move. I'm sorry, y'all. No. He's like, I'm sorry, y'all. I had to come to is and apologize to y'all face. So shout out to him for that. But. <laughs> The day that they announced that Full Gear was going to be in Minnesota, WWE dropped that they were having a Royal Rumble in St. Louis. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's two organizations that, you know, they, they both, they both want to be, well, WWE is already important to St. Louis, but mm-hmm. AEW has announced, oh, okay, we want to be important to St. Louis as well. So, hey, man, that was smart. That was Very smart. smart. <laughs> Very smart. <laughs> But so we got a couple of the matches in the Royal Rumble so far. We got uh, Becky Lynch versus Dewdrop for the women's championship. That could be all right. That could be all right. You know, it should be. Well, OK, maybe we'll they, maybe they hold <laughs> Bianca Belair. Yeah. Hopefully Bianca Belair is going to win the title and then get back at Becky Lynch. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off on that. Uh, we got Edge and Beth Phoenix versus the Miz and Maurice. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, OK, that's going to be that's going to be all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Roman Reigns versus Seth freaking Rollins mm-hmm. for Seth mm-hmm. freaking Rollins, <laughs> <laughs> which that could be interesting. They cut they cut a promo at the end of SmackDown last night. It was yeah. I'm, I'm gonna say this, Roman. And we we've been talking about how good of a job Roman is doing, mm-hmm. but Roman when he gets that angry twitch, that angry that angry twitch in his face, yeah. I'm like, yo, this dude, he's he's on another level, man. Mm-hmm. Roman's on another level. You know, shout out to him for that. Uh, so we also have the men's Royal Rumble match. So got, you know, normal 30-man thing. We'll probably have some surprises. But the one that I want to talk about right now, we got the women's Royal Rumble match. We already got one surprise entry. We out have nowhere. the Impact. Out of nowhere, we got the Impact Knockouts champion, Nikki James, in the women's in the Royal Rumble. And they've announced her. And yeah. the knockouts, impact yeah. knockouts champion. What you got on that, man? What happens if she wins? <laughs> Yo, if we want to knock out the knock down the door, 
Yep. Never win. That's compelling TV. You will get people exactly. like, wait a minute. The Impact Women's Champion just won the WWE Royal Rumble? Yep. What does that it's mean? It's going to WrestleMania. Yeah, it's going to WrestleMania to fight either the Raw or SmackDown champion. Probably, she would probably go fight Charlotte. Right. You know, on SmackDown. It's right. like, it's I would have right there. there. Like, you wouldn't build that up. You're building that up. You know people are talking about that. Have right. her win. Like, what, 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 that's going to get people, that's going to get everybody watching. Have her win. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. But shout out to, shout out to Impact because there's a lot of talk about the forbidden door. There's a lot of talk about wrestling companies working with each other. But the thing that people don't realize is Impact mm-hmm. is the, are the people that's working with everybody. That's what true. AEW? AEW That's was right. working with Impact, right. and they was kind of getting some New Japan people because of that. But now Impact working with WWE, they still they still working with New Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also Newsflash. First of all, they have a they had the, their last pay per view is called Hard to Kill because right. Impact That's has right. literally been hard to kill. Yeah, <laughs> this year marks twenty years That's of Impact. Crazy. <laughs> twenty years. <laughs> Of impact. Here's, wow. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm blow your mind even more. <laughs> WCW, the brand. I ain't talking about Jim Crockett. WCW. I ain't talking about NWA. Right. WCW, the brand, 13 years. <laughs> over, not only did they beat them, they beat them with seven years to spare. <laughs> you mean to tell me? Wow. Impact's around for 20 years? 20 years this year. 20 years this year. So it also makes sense from their standpoint because now they get to say, hey, we have our champion on WWE TV and we celebrate in 20 years. I, I guarantee you, not only did they negotiate bringing Mickey James over, but they were just like, hey, just mention that this is the 20 year anniversary impact. Just, just one time, just one time on commentary. We, wow. we got you. Would you be surprised if Impact were to start putting their TV shows on the WWE network? No, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Okay. I would not okay. be surprised at all. Okay. Um, I mean, and they have a they have a they have a deal with uh, Access TV right now. Them in New Japan, that's a uh, Mark Cuban and randomly Steve Harvey's channel. <laughs> so <laughs> they have a deal with them. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they store up on WWE Network. Also, because WWE, like you mentioned earlier, they've released like eighty people, right? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if WWE starts putting other shows on the network or mm-hmm. just bringing in other people the forbidden door, as you will, just right. because they're like, yo, we're not trying to keep that many people on the books. Mm. Okay. They're like, yo, we'll have, we'll have our top, you know, 50 people on the roll. Everybody else could come in from outside. Okay. Okay. I like that. I feel like that's where they're going. I like that. I like so, that. Talk, <laughs> speaking of cleaning house, uh, we'll jump into the news right quick. <laughs> and NXT, man. NXT, it, we've already seen it. We've already seen the in living color, colorful NXT. Dude, it's too damn colorful. Listen, man, if you got one of them good ass TVs, <laughs> the new NXT, I don't even know how your TV can handle all this colorful shit on NXT. It's too much. Yeah. It looks like a damn. You already just pour out a big ass bottle of Skittles. That's what the NXT look like. <laughs> <laughs> look like melted Skittles. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you got if you got HD, if you got 4K, it's too much. It's too much. It's too much. Like, they nah, to, it's, it's I way feel too like much. They need to put up. Remember um, the All of the Lights video by Kanye West? They had they had a seizure warning before the video came on. <laughs> they need to do that for NXT. <laughs> <laughs> like Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. All basically all the Triple H people. From from NXT, they gone. Except Shawn Michaels, they gone. They gone. They gone. They gone. Samoa Joe, gone. gone. William gone. Regal, gone. Road Dog, gone. 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 Man, bunch of other people. Uh, Gabe Sapolsky from Evolve, gone. Gone. <laughs> so WWE put out a statement uh, about this, and they said, with the continued evolution of NXT 2.0, we've decided to part ways with some of the staff based in our performance center. We like to thank them for their many contributions throughout the years and wish them the best mm. in their future. Yep. <laughs> Man, what you, so 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 what you got? What you got on? I guess 
NXT 1.0 uh, versus NXT 2.0. Like Brian Breaker also beat Tommaso Ciampa for mm-hmm. the uh, mm-hmm. for the NXT Championship. They made they put Tommaso Ciampa on main event this past oh. week and made him dye his beard so it wasn't gray no more. What? You know they they this is serious about this no old cat. You know no. I mean, I you know, Braun Break, I think he's been wrestling for like 11 months, but he's Rick Steiner's son. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What, what, what you got on this whole situation? I am shocked to see. So to me, a lot of people that were NXT 1.0 were there too long. Like, like yes, uh, right. why, why Adam Cole wasn't pushed up to the main roster? I don't, that, I don't understand nope. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a mystery. The whole purpose of NXT was to get people behind their stars there. Mm-hmm. And bring them up. It just seemed like they. It's like they followed that. For they followed it for Roman. They followed it for Seth. They followed it for Becky Lynch. They followed, but they they had the groundwork, and then it mm-hmm. just it just went away. Like it's like they totally did something different. Why I don't know. So two point oh is cool. A uh, Brown Breaker is pretty much some, uh, Brown Breaker. I know it's some it's some new. Some new cast is there. I know some black dudes yeah. is there. I ain't paying paying attention. Yes, I don't know their shout name. Out, shout out to yeah, shout out to Carmelo Hayes. He just won. Uh, the, he he was already North American champion. He merged it with the cruiserweight championship. So yeah, he's not double champ, but he, he merged two champs to get championships together. But shout out to him. To, to me, I just think they need to get back to what brought them to the dance, man. Like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Fix, don't fix it. They had a perfect. Yeah. What they would to, to me for about four years, probably between. Well, I don't know, like 2016 to 2020, it was you had NXT uh, takeover the, the that weekend of WrestleMania, the best. They had yeah. probably have the best show if if it wasn't better than WrestleMania. You had exactly. that, and then that Monday night on Raw, you bringing somebody up, and they and they were instantly stars. <laughs> exactly, so, right, right. They just got away from that. I don't, I don't know why. You know. I yeah. don't know, man. It, it, to me, it's just they, they're getting away from what they what they normally do. Listen, L.A. Knight. I don't know why he's still there. Why? Why he's not on SmackDown? Don't make no damn yep. sense to me. Y'all need to, man. Listen, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I told you. I called. Didn't yep. I call that out about some months ago? I said yeah. L.A. Knight yeah. is yeah. gonna be the future. That I, it's gonna happen. I'm calling it. Yep. He's the next. Yeah. He's the next. If there's anybody that would beat Roman Reigns, get him on a heater and have him beat him. Yep. I'm saying it. LA Knight is the future. <laughs> yeah. So that's an interesting thing. I feel like now I haven't been watching NXT, you know, hardcore, but, you know, I ca- catch highlights and stuff like that. And I feel like Me too. the highlights that they put out um, ever since he fought uh, Cameron Grimes for the uh, the million dollar championship, which they had a dope few. And then whichever takeover that was when they fought for the uh, million dollar championship was a really dope ass match. Like, okay, really dope match. I feel like they ain't been using them like that no more. Now, I could be wrong. Right. IWC, don't jump on my back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if, if you've been watching NXT like that, don't jump on my back. But I feel like in 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 what they want to highlight that's been happening on NXT, they ain't been using them for real, man. Okay. And okay. I, I, I think that does them a disservice, man, because right. let's let's keep it real, man. They got they got one, probably two other companies that's on their that's 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 coming up on their heels and taking talent. Now that might be what they want. Right. They might just be like, hey, you know, we ain't trying to keep all these cats on the roster. Right. If so, I guess you're helping them by getting them TV time. But hey, man, just don't keep like, don't keep playing around with these cats, man. Dude, they're still, but see, my no, my whole problem is, is that they're still, God, it's just, it's, it's so, because I don't, listen, I'm not going to sit here and act like I know about this business because I, I mean, I, I've watched it for a long time, but I don't know the logistics and all the way the true business being behind it. But what I'm noticing right. is that it's still for WrestleMania, that same old, we got to reach for older stars. Exactly. At what point will that stop? You got to bit like we're building, you're building these guys up for what to go somewhere else. Cause that's what exactly. a lot of them are doing. You're building them up and right. then they're leaving. Like yeah. you only can rely on your old guard so long. And I think I, I spew that on this podcast all the time. Like, yeah, Cena made y'all a lot of money for years, but look look what it's doing now. Nobody, no, right. the only star that's left now, it's Roman. That's it. Right. And look how long it took him to get to that level. You know, so yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I think they need to start 
And I'm glad that kind of they're, maybe they're going to start doing that because, as we now know, WrestleMania is two nights now, which is exactly in fucking sane. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, maybe they need to start. Maybe have one show where the first night of WrestleMania is these the new cats, the new blood. Get them going, get them, and then the Sunday night, the main show is is you know the main people. I mean, do you agree with that? Yeah, I think I think they can do do something where they mix it up, really. Um, yeah, because to, to answer your question, when do they stop relying on the old guard? Not to be funny, but it's when the old guard ain't here no more, or the old guard yeah. can't go no more. Yeah, because the problem is the problem is it ain't just it ain't just the the fact that you have these old you, you don't have a Goldberg, you don't have a you know a, a Triple H, you don't have all of these cats to come back. You definitely don't have an Undertaker anymore. No, he does. Um, it's not only that, <laughs> but it's the fact that it's the fact that you haven't made any new stars. Yeah. So in about ten years, the old guard is Roman. Mm-hmm. Well. Or maybe Cena, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or let's say, okay, you know, we'll, we'll put Edge into that old guard as well. But n- now you have it, you have uh, Roman, Cena, um, uh, 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 who else? AJ. I'm gonna put AJ in there. A- what? AJ, AJ. So AJ is up there too. So he might yep. be pretty close to old guard as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But so yep. I mean, you might have Kevin Owens. No, nope. you don't. That's that's like three or four people. And now I, I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to pull up a lot of cash from NIL. They're trying mm-hmm. to pull in a lot of people that are athletes and they're going to make them. But the problem is, if they're not making them stars, who are they going to fight at Mania in 10 years? Right. Right. That's right. Honestly, honestly, here's a bold prediction. And I know they, they've been teasing this on, on, on TV. Uh, but a bold prediction, 10 years, one of the stars that you'll have at WrestleMania is MJF. I can agree. With, no, that that's that that that's, and, that's 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 I can see that happen for sure. Yeah, and and I, and, and also MJF is only in his twenties. Mm-hmm. He's like 23, 24. So ten years from now, it's not a it's not a stretch of the imagination to say that he's going to be in his prime. He ain't even Dude. hit that yet. So if he MJF, can stay healthy, MJF might be a prodigy, dude. That dude, he really on, is. A, on the microphone. Yeah. One of them cold is out right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, and to be perfectly honest, like I buy his gimmick to mm-hmm. a point that I don't think it's a gimmick. I think mm-hmm. that's how that dude. It, he, you know what? I would be so crushed if he was just like the nicest, coolest. Like <laughs> <laughs> if he was the most well, caring, we trustworthy. Par- dude. We go to Nash's party and he's there and he's not a fucking asshole. Are you going to be disappointed? I'm gonna be disappointed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna go up to him and be like, "Hey, man, you're not supposed to be this cool. You're well, not supposed to be this cool, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this between us because I ain't ruined the cafe, but you're not supposed to be this cool. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if you think about it, like that's that's kind of that's kind of what you got and, until. WWE has done themselves a disservice by basically skipping this generation. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're skipping this generation. They took all the people that they, they stockpiled and had an NXT and all that and throwing them away, letting them go other places. And now like, okay, we're going to bring in new folks, but you got this gap. Mm-hmm. You got this gap. Who's going to be that person? I mean, okay, maybe, maybe you have Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle is, you know, this is the part where Whitener gets up and turns it off. But <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Riddle's another cat that okay, cool. You might have him. Mm-hmm. Oh, Randy, Randy, he gonna be the old part of old guard. Or oh, Rand- yeah, Randy's yeah. old guard. Yeah, Randy's old guard. <laughs> Randy is is very close to doing the Undertaker deal for real. He's like, yo, I'm not, I'm not getting out of bed till April. <laughs> right. <laughs> like for what? <laughs> 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 all right, man. So, all right. So, so we already kind of talked about, you know, WWE, AEW a little bit, man. So there was a, um, a Toronto Star article Uh-oh. that talked about it, basically the, the, the clickbaity title of it is Can Tony Khan's AEW beat Mr. Man at WWE at their own game? No. I'm like, I immediately groan at that. I immediately groan at it because I'm of the thought of, hey, man. They don't got to beat WWE. Like, look, they're promote. They're putting content. They're trying to make their money. Like, let let them make their money. Let them make their money. Okay, AEW takes shots, but that's what the fa- that's what the AEW fan base wants. That's what keeps them 
Here, here, here everybody. You heard it here first. In case you read here, for the people all the way in the back. AEW, AEW, ain't be, ain't be <laughs> WWE. I'm gonna say that for you motherfuckers in the back. AEW ain't beating WWE. <laughs> Get it out your head. The shit ain't gonna happen. Okay? So forget about it. I think I think I think part of part of the problem is that people saw the attitude era and they right. saw uh, uh the Monday Night Wars and they don't understand that the Monday Night Wars were a legitimate beef between two billionaires. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about, it wasn't about who had the better wrestling product. It wasn't about who could, it wasn't even about who could gain most viewers. It was about Ted Turner being pissed off that Vince McMahon finessed him Mm -hmm. out of the, the, out of the uh, world championship wrestling time slot on TBS back in the eighties. That's what it was about. (laughs) Ted Turner didn't own WCW yet. He so he so, and not only that, Vince finessed him out of the joint by saying, oh yeah, I'm going to put on original content. And it was like, psych, I'm showing reruns on TBS. Mm -hmm. Still getting your ratings, still getting all that. Ted Turner then couldn't just buy Vince McMahon out. He had to, he had to buy it back from Vince McMahon. Vince jacks up the price because Mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. Then he had to sell it back to Jim Crockett who he took it from in the first place. Right, right. <laughs> when you mess with, a, uh, you mess with billionaires and they money, that's the mm-hmm. thing that they care about is nope. money, right? Nope. So Ted Turner bought WCW in order to, yes, put Vince Man out of business because he was mad because Vince cost him money. We don't have that today. We have two oh. wrestling companies. We we have we have one cat that's a billion, we you know one cat that's a billionaire, another cat that's a billionaire. You got one cat that's like, oh, I'm a super excited wrestling fan. I'm trying to try to put in content, whatever, whatever. We'll get to that in a second. We'll, oh. we'll get back to that in a second. Um, <laughs> and then you got another billionaire that's been in the business for a long ass time. He's established his brand as the number one. Yo, they don't have to beat each other. They can coexist at the same time. You got yeah. Marvel, you got DC. Sometimes, <laughs> one time they came together and they made a Marvel versus DC, and it was great. It, they came there, they went back apart, and did their own thing. Yeah. They could do this. So, to this article, I immediately groaned, like, uh, come on. <laughs> but the interesting thing, though, interesting thing. So, <laughs> oh. WWE provided a quote <laughs> to oh. the Toronto Star oh. about Ken. Uh, AEW beat WWE in its own game. What they say, and, <laughs> and it said, uh, and this is referring to uh, the um, street fight bet- f- b- between Penelope Ford and the Bunny versus Ty Conte and uh, Anna J. Uh-huh. Crazy street fight, bloody. If, if you haven't seen it, it ended with the Bunny getting choked out with some barbed wire. That lets you know. What, what, what kind of match he was. Right. So WWE statement reads, and I quote, Uh-oh. If, <clears throat> I think I'm going to read it in Vince's voice. <clears throat> <laughs> if you look at the gory self mutilization that bloodied several women on December 31st event on TNT, pal, it quickly becomes clear that these are two very different businesses. <laughs> we had an edgier product in Attitude Era, pal. And in, 20, in a 2022 world, we don't believe in the type of dangerous and brutal display that uh, appealing on network partners, sponsors, venues, children, or the general public as a whole. Uh-huh. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, okay, you know, haha, that's funny. Mm-hmm. Um, turns out, this man said that exact same response, or one very similar to Ted Turner back in the day. Oh, he just copied and pasted it. <laughs> so apparently he sent Ted Turner a letter and it reads, and I quote, Dear Ted, <laughs> since, <laughs> since, <laughs> since there's been no response to my repeated request that you and your pro wrestling, he wrote pro wrestling. <laughs> Wrestling starting with an R with an apostrophe at the end. (laughs) 
since there's been no response to my repeated request that you and your pro wrestling company stop the practice of self-mutilization, self-mutilation, I can only assume, based on the last two weeks of Nitro, that the practice of self-mutilation, in parentheses, slicing oneself with a razor blade, is not only condoned, but encouraged. As you know, Hulk Hogan has been bleeding all over the place for the past two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> there have been numerous references on your wrestling programming that this weekend's double cage match will be so violent that their one opponent will be bleeding to the point of no recognition. <laughs> this encouraged <laughs> practice of self-mutilation <laughs> is disgusting, <laughs> violent, potentially infectious, and completely contradictory in every way to your testimony before Congress in June of 93, and contrary to your 1993 five participation of voices against violence notwithstanding numerous unprecedented predatory practices against world wrestling federation if you continue to promote self-mutilation i will hope your stockholders hold you accountable for this unethically guttural potentially unhealthy practice sincerely vincent mcmahon what the fuck? <laughs> but wait but wait a minute so then Here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing that always trips me out about the Attitude Era. The, mm-hmm. Did you got and, and I'm, I'm, I'm I might be wrong, but I don't I don't think mm-hmm. I am. But majority of the shows that were on from 1995 to like 1999 on TNT were TV PG. I don't think they were TV 14. They were just edgier shows. I can't, I, 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 yeah. I, I can't remember, but there's been a lot of nitros I saw TV PG. So I say that I say that to say it's funny that because I guess Ted Turner eventually got the memo and actually changed it because right. it was it was just WCW they 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 really wasn't like like you know doing like the risque shit like the Jerry Springer shit that was in the nineties. They were just doing right. they were just doing like real to life. Stories to me, the stories just were exactly bad. right. Oh, um, it's funny. I say that because it's funny that he sent Vince sent that letter and then he, he actually responded to it by <laughs> not doing the crazy shit, like not doing the Jerry Springer shit. <laughs> right, right. Now, so the TV ratings started in '97. So I would I would imagine that yeah, right after you write, it was TV PG because uh, Time Warner told them it had to be TV PG. So okay. when, that's when, when WWE went up to TV 14, WCW still had to keep it, uh, keep it at the same level. Okay. Okay. Which also I forgot to mention in the history of Ted Turner, uh, Vince McMahon, uh, this was also mad that Ted Turner testified against them in the steroid trial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that had a lot to do with <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, until Tony Khan tries to get this man, a federal case, <laughs> Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no beef. Ain't no. no wrestling competition. Look, man, it's two wrestling companies that are trying to coexist yeah. separately, probably eventually together. Mm-hmm. 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 Eventually together. Mm-hmm. And just leave it alone, man. I get it. Okay, cool. Maybe that's fun. It's fun to look at the ratings for some people. Hey, man. TV stations want ratings. TV companies want ratings. Prime exactly. example. Tyron Willie got knocked out by a YouTuber boxer for not too long ago. So what did that tell you? It, they try, they're working together. The shit's working. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Which that's that's a funny that's, that's funny. Shout out to the folks that are uh, you know, there were, I saw a lot of people tweeting that night and they were just like, man. Man, this is trash, man. You know, everybody giving this YouTuber so much money to to, to box and you don't see real boxing. And it's like, because y'all don't watch real boxing. No. Nope. Y'all don't <laughs> watch real boxing. Nope. Boxing nope. come on every weekend. Yep. yep. Every single weekend. It might not be a big fight, but PBC, yep. uh, 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 The Zone, Top, Top Rank, rank. Yep. Uh, everybody. Everybody, there is a boxing match every weekend. The problem is you don't pay attention until everybody's paying attention. Everybody pays attention to YouTubers. Mm -hmm. They want to see the YouTuber get knocked out. It's pro wrestling 101. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right, man. Uh Uh-oh. It's about that time. (laughs) We We got a lot of awards to give out this week. A lot of awards. And a new award as well. So, oh, ready yeah. are. 
if you may do the honors and let the people know what awards we got out here. On oh, God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the week coming from UCAS, where we give out hi prestigious awards. Now. <laughs> <laughs> the first award. If you if you if you're a newcomer, welcome. Thank you for subscribing. It's called the You Fucked Up, You Know Your Ass is Doom Award. How do you get said award? It's really quite simple. If you're in the realm of professional wrestling and you do some dumb shit, I for an example, uh take a PTO to commit treason. <laughs> we we are the motherfuckers that tell you about yourself. And and you give you an award for doing something stupid. Now during the year of our Lord 2020. John Jones decides to go out in the middle of Albuquerque, New Mexico doing quarantine and get a DWI. <laughs> <laughs> For no reason. He was just bored. John Jones is supposed to be at home. Yep. We just we just considered that John Jones has won his freedom because he already had enough problems as it was. So we decided to request the award from the You Fucked Up, You Know Your Ass is Doom Award to the John Jones's Freedom Memorial Award because John yes. Jones didn't want his freedom. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted it to die. He wanted it to die. <laughs> Now, we have companion awards to this award. Uh, one, you, you, you guys know Adrian Broner. Yeah, the boxer, Adrian Broner. Well, one, during one conference, press conference, he told the, everybody, he told the entire world that he said, you motherfuckers think I'm crazy. I'm about to lose to Manny Pacquiao, man. I'm about to beat his motherfucking ass on God and him, and I don't know who Nim is. Well, Saturday night, Manny Pacquiao beat Andrew Broner. He beat his ass. <laughs> so if you're in a realm of, of professional wrestling or around professional wrestling, and you say you're going to do something that you ain't do, <laughs> you get the own goddamn award. <laughs> uh, third, third, oh, so it's four words. And third, if you do something that qualifies for both the awards that I just said, this stated, we call this the Nate Robinson Award of Egregiousness. Because Nate <laughs> Robinson should have been in there fighting Jake Paul. But, but maybe we might have to change the name of that to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> we, might, we might have to change the name of that one. <laughs> That's still up in the air. And finally, everybody, the new award. Yes, the moment you all have been waiting for. The brand Ooh. new award. Former Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver Antonio Brown one day decides, hey, I'm not going back out. He, he sat there and he was like, hey. No, he just got pissed off and the coach told him, you're done. He, he took his shit off. He took his damn jersey off. He took his shoulder pads off, threw it on the desk, threw his damn, he threw his damn fucking gloves and shit in the fucking arena, took his damn fucking tank tack off, threw it off and ran off. In the middle of play, <laughs> it was like third and five. The niggas was third and five. He ran off and shot the deuces to the fans. So if you were in the realm of professional wrestling and you just one day decide, yo, I'm tired of this shit, I'm out. We give you the Antonio Brown "fuck this shit, I'm out" award. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So without further ado, we gonna start with the Antonio Brown "fuck this, I'm out" award. Y'all know why. <laughs> y'all know why. Y'all been talking about it. Y'all been hearing about it. And I'm pretty sure I've been waiting on for, waiting on us to speak on it. But Big Swole, mm. Big Swole is the first recipient of the Antonio Brown Fuck This I'm Out Award. <laughs> if you've been living under a rock, let me explain to you why. So Big Swole, uh, she was signed to AEW in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, November 2021, her contract expired and she chose she, she came on and said that herself and AEW decided mutually not mm -hmm. to renew her contract, right? right? Okay. So she starts up a podcast, like, not too long after, just to kind of talk about the, the first, first episode of the podcast is just like, yo, let me speak my mind. Let me just tell you about why I left AEW. Um, why she, I mean, she had a fire, dope, dope feud with Diamante. Right. right. Didn't, you know, didn't make AEW dark, but they had a dope-ass match where it was three falls. Each fall, you had to win a different way. So the first okay. fall was normal pinfall. Second pinfall was a, a, a submission. The third pinfall was like you had to knock the chick ass out, right? <laughs> dope match. Really dope match. She ended up winning it and then pretty much didn't do nothing else after that. Okay. okay. So she gets on her podcast. She was talking very, very highly. And there's a reason why I'm not jumping into just the meat and potatoes of the matter because I want to give y'all context that people on the internet don't seem to fucking have. Uh oh, <laughs> or it's take. time for another okay. one of these. <laughs> it's time for another one of these. 
RVS Rants. <laughs> First one of 2022. <laughs> so I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build. I'm gonna build up to the rant. I'm gonna build up to the rant. So she gets on there and says, "Yo, Tony Khan, great dude. Plenty of nights that uh, you know the crew will leave the show. He will buy out a restaurant for everybody. Get whatever you want. Eat, drink, whatever you want. He was like, just good dude." Uh, Big Swell was in a leadership position at AEW. Uh, Kenny Omega, for, for the longest time, was booking the women's division. Kenny Omega signed her. So uh, she was kind of put in charge of helping the women get their matches together and, and all that. So she had a leadership position in the company. Okay, cool. Okay. A lot of y'all didn't know that because a lot of y'all didn't listen to what, everything she said. We're going to come back to that. We're going to listen to that. We're going to come back. We're going to come back to that, right? Okay. So, she is, you know, she says, okay, what are some things that AEW can improve on? Mm -hmm. She says, number one, the women's division. Mm -hmm. She was like, until recently, until probably like three or four months, the women's division has not been getting the the kind of attention that it deserves. Right. Uh, She's right. mm -hmm. You know, we've we've just seen we've just started seeing more than one women's division match per Dynamite or any other show. Right. Okay, cool. So here is where the shit storm happens. Okay, she says also. And I feel like I'm going to I'm going to read this part. She says, oh, sorry. So she had three things. Women's division. She said uh, uh, there's a lack of structure. Uh -huh. Right. So she said that, OK, you know, it's cool that people have the creative freedom to do what they need to do. However, mm -hmm. you also need to do something else for the people that ain't there yet. That's true. The people that ain't there yet are basically being left out to dry mm -hmm. because they're not there yet, mm -hmm. which is also true. 100 percent true. So. Third thing, she says, outside of lack of structure, their biggest issue is diversity. Mm -hmm. I don't beat around the bush when it comes to diversity and my people. Mm -hmm. There is no representation truly. And when there is, it doesn't come across as genuine uh, in the black community at all. I don't know why yeah. everybody's so afraid to accept it or say it, but it's not a good look. What happens yeah. is you have this wonderful company again, mm -hmm. again, this wonderful company who treats right. People like family, but there is nobody that looks like me represented at the top That's true. in the room with them. It's like they have, they're, they're not helping to necessarily influence decisions, but explain why certain slang and certain words shouldn't be said. Mm -hmm. There is no one there who can uh, explain the culture and experience except for us. Right. right. That was her quote. And she went on to say, you know, she went on to say other things. She was, she was critical, but she was not malicious. She didn't trash the company. Right. Tony Khan. Okay. Tony Khan then, oh, of course, God. like everybody else on the internet, doesn't look at context, doesn't hear everything she said. They saw the news article that said that, uh, what did it say? Big Swell explains how a lack of diversity and structure led to her leaving AEW. That was the oh, clickbait. Okay. That was what they took from that whole thing. Right. Tony Khan then tweets the night of the, the aforementioned uh, street fight between well, four women. Uh, and I quote, the top two AEW execs, execs are Brown, me and Mega, Jade, Bowens, Caster, Dante, Nyla, Isaiah, and Mark, Quinn, all won on TV this month. The TBS title tournament has been very diverse. Okay. Okay. That's fine. That's right. fine. Right. Here's, here's, where it gets, here's where it gets messy. I let Swole's contract expire as I felt like her wrestling wasn't good enough. Uh, Rampage Street Fight tonight. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> just like that. Tony Khan, <laughs> just, just like that. Just like that. Tony, <laughs> Tony, Tony, check this out, bro. Check this out. Oh. I know you're watching. I know you're watching. Hey, we took a picture watching. with Tony Khan too, dog. We took a picture with Tony. We took a picture with Tony Khan too. I put it on the everything. Tag okay. you on and everything, Tony. I know you're watching. Uh, <laughs> shut your ass up. <laughs> Shut your ass up. Yeah. Listen, listen. If he had stopped that tweet yep. one sentence short, one sentence short, <laughs> people would have might have been like, okay, okay, right. maybe you have a point. Now, he's also on some fuck shit too because mm -hmm. counting the black people in the room ain't diversity. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Big Swole also said, hey, I'm talking about my people. To come out and then just be like, but I'm brown, but I'm brown. That ain't what she's talking about. Y'all know what we're talking about, bruh. <laughs> that ain't what we're talking about. The, the week before this all dropped, um, black Twitter, black wrestling Twitter was divided because Brandy Rose came out 
and had a promo with uh, 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 Dan Lambert. Uh-huh. And she said, oh, oh, you a black belt? Well, I'm a black bitch. What's up? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you put that out. I was like, okay, are we questioning her blackness anymore? There it is. <laughs> I, think, I think we are. The black community was divided on that, right? So maybe maybe that's part of what she was saying. I, mm-hmm. You know, okay, I'm going I'm to leave that over there. I'm going to leave that over there for a second. Tony, you do not have mm-hmm. to get up and tweet everything that's on your mind. Nope. Because what you did, mm-hmm. not, I'm, not even, I'm not even looking at the here and now. Now, you know, shout out to, shout out to uh, Jay Cargill. She came out and just said, yo, I'm, I don't. I don't agree. Now, this was also a week before she was supposed to win the TNT title, so of course right. she wouldn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Will shout to Will Hobbs. He also said, "Yo, you know, I've been putting spot." There were there were there were a few black people that came up with just like, "Yo, I got this spot." Da da da. Okay, right. Y'all still can't y'all still can't invalidate what Big Swole is feeling and talking about, right? Right. But to say that her wrestling wasn't good enough, right? Is the part that pissed me off, dog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a big Swole fan, full disclosure. I'm biased, all that. But she had been putting on dope matches. The aforementioned joint with, 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 with Diamante that didn't get on regular TV. Right. And they gave it everything. They gave it everything but regular TV time. They gave it a Mark Henry interview. They gave it a, a, a promo videos. They gave it all of these things. When Britt Baker current women's champion not take anything away from her but big swole is one of the people that helped her get over right Britt baker wasn't that great when she started either mm-hmm. but her and big That's swole true. had a match on dynamite mm-hmm. uh during during the during the daily's place era during mm-hmm. during the we 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 taping the show at the crib era at the crib <laughs> that, <laughs> that helped Britt baker get over so you right. want to talk about this woman that's a leader in the women's division Right. That helped your women's champion get over when you wasn't giving women that much time. All because she said, yo, here is a critique. Not only that, after that, she was just like, yo, I want AEW to succeed. But here are the critiques that I had. Right. You tripping, bro. Yeah, he tripping. Yeah, he tripping. You tripping, bro. Yeah, he tripping, man. And, you know, and, you know, and, and like, not only that, that's the here and now. Let's talk about the future. Okay. Let's talk, let's, let's, let's talk about who is out there to pick up. Mm-hmm. You got Keith Lee. Mm-hmm. You got Mia Yim. Yep. You got uh uh you got uh Shane Square Strickland. Right. I mean they just they just picked up Jay Lethal. Shout out shout out to that. Yep. Yep, you yep, have yep. a bunch of, you have a bunch of black people on the table right mm-hmm. now that you can mm-hmm. pick up and be stars for you that you might have just pissed off. Hey, hold up. And then you look at now, and then you know what the funny thing is? Look at WWE and how many black people on a TV screen. And is that exactly. not coincidence, WWE? Because there's a lot of color. Y'all got a lot of us in these top top positions right now on TV. Well, well yeah, and that's that's also something that Big Swole mentioned as, as a part of her whole quote. She was like, yo, um, her, her daughter, her and Cedric Alexander's daughter, she was like, yo, she stopped watching AEW, number one, when I wasn't on TV. Mm-hmm. And then number two, she got Bianca. She got Big E. She mm-hmm. got the, the rest of the New Day to watch. Yep. She got all these black people, Shelton Benjamin mm-hmm. and her daddy. Yep. <laughs> she got yep. she got all these black people to watch on WWE. So she that's why Big Swole was bringing it up. Yo, right. where's the rep- She was like, yo, I want my daughter to be able to watch it and be like, I see me. Yep. I see somebody that look like me and daddy. Yep. Yep. Come on, man. Dude, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's, uh, hey, man, WWE is playing chess. They're playing. They've been in the game too long. They're, they're, they yeah. have so much experience under their belt with demographics and trends and all that stuff. Like, yo, Tony Khan's just not getting into this. And this is surprising right. to me that he doesn't have more black representation on his television because the goddamn football team he got has mostly black <laughs> people on the damn team. So what the hell you mean you ain't got no black people? I don't understand that. Help me understand so, that. So, <laughs> so that was the other thing. That was the other thing. I told Matt, I told Matt a couple episodes back, yo, they're black, like one of their black uh, top stars is Scorpio Sky, right? Right. Or should be, right? Right. He was the first tag team champion. Right. First person to hold the tag belts. He's had, you know, like, like he got injured. Let me say okay. that he got injured in the middle of that. 
One big gripe that I got about AEW and Tony Khan, don't take this out of context and, and be mad at me. Be now and bad people said, coming. St. St. Louis Black Podcast says. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I might actually, I might actually, that might actually be the post for this. But uh, Tony <laughs> Khan, uh, <laughs> one great that I have about AEW is that they don't say when cats are in- in- injured. Mm. Like you have wins and losses, the wins and losses matter. You're trying to be presented as a sports pro- product. There's no reason why they shouldn't have said it when, when black people were just like, "Yo, where's Scorpio Sky?" There's no reason they shouldn't have said, "Yo, he was out for like three months with an injury." Right. right. There's no reason they can't say that. And then when he came back, he won the, the brass ring joint. Uh, now he's in a tag team again. Now he also has a legitimate gripe. Now he just signed, he just signed on until uh, 2024, I believe. But now he has a legitimate gripe because he hasn't had a uh, like a TNT title shot right. the whole time. And he's right. on social. And here's the problem: he's on social media saying that he's you know. But on TV, when he comes out, they let Dan Lambert do all the talk. Let me ask you this: Do you they think- fumble in the bag, bro? Do you do you think Tony Khan is assuming too much responsibility of critical roles and behind the scenes? Because from what I hear, he's he's the be all end all. Like not, I mean, I don't want to say like Vince, but like Vince, like he, like Vince, he, yeah. he got the he creative did. control. He guys like he's doing everything. Do you think yeah. that is the and and I mean it could be that you know maybe the network is crunching down a little bit. Like okay, y'all had your fun for a year. Okay, now we want to see. We want to see some profits off of this shit. Like, what, what, what we right. do? Did you think it's starting to get a little serious over there now, or does that, at, at some point, oh, yeah. that's got, we said at some point the fun, the fun and the bullshit was gonna come to an end. Like, it was, it was gonna get right. structured and get serious. What you think? Yeah, I think so. I, like Tony Khan is trying to be Paul Heyman in ECW. Okay, but you know, saying that's 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 the person that he's trying to be. And I think to your point, I think yeah. You know, the network or somebody might have said, let's crunch down, let's be serious, because he took a lot of the booking away from Cody, Bucks, and Kenny Omega. Mm-hmm. They t- he took a lot. He took a lot. He was basically like, yo, do y'all AVP things, do the things that y'all are paid a salary to do. And right. it kind of shows, it kind of shows with, I mean, I, the Bucks have been hurt. Uh, Matt Jackson just had COVID. Kenny, first of all, let me, let me rewind. Shout out to Kenny Omega. This uh-huh. fool said, uh, after he lost the belt, he was like, I'm taking a bunch of time off. He was just like, yo, I've been hurt since like 2017. He was like, bro, whenever I get in the ring, the to me, the ring is spinning. Damn. He put on some classic ass matches, but in his mind, the ring has been spinning <laughs> since 2018, bro. <laughs> um, shout out to him for pulling off what he was able to pull off in that time. But yeah, I think, I, I definitely think it probably wouldn't be as bad if Tony Khan was a different dude. It's obvious that Tony Khan is a dude who can't handle criticism. Right. If you're trying to be Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman didn't give a shit about criticism unless the criticism made him some money. Right. That's right. Whenever, whenever WCW says something sideways, Never WWF says something sideways. That's when he would come out on TV and be like, yeah, fuck them. But then, he went to work for WWE right. as soon as ECW went down. <laughs> he didn't destroy no relationships. Um, you know, uh, I mean, until checks started bouncing, of course, but he he was about his bread. Right. Tony Khan, I get it. He's having fun being a wrestling promoter, but he need to get better about his bread and not say dumb shit like that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. A lot of people need to do that. <laughs> I, think it's time to get our, I think it's time to get our special guest on here, isn't it? It's about that time. It's about that time. All right, so let's move on. <laughs> let's move on to the On God Nim Award right here. <laughs> so the On God Nim Award this week, we got MLW, Major League Wrestling, the whole company. The <laughs> whole they, they company. Ain't they suing WWE right now? <laughs> yep. They're suing WWE for, get this, antitrust. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> me, you mean the company that owns just about all of pro wrestling in the world? Yeah, them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, Please they're trying to get them on an antitrust suit. So, uh, the press uh, conference says, um, "Professional wrestling company Major League Wrestling filed a lawsuit today against World Wrestling Entertainment, 
The federal court antitrust lawsuit is based on WWE's ongoing attempts to undermine the competition and monopolize the pro wrestling market by interfering with MLW's contracts and business prospects. So essentially, they said MLW said, yo, we had a show lined up with Vice. TV, okay. Right. Right. That ended up only happening for a couple weeks. MLW is claiming that WWE called up Vice and was like, hey, don't let them be on TV no more. <laughs> That's the basis of their case. <laughs> what proof do you have of this MLW? Give me some proof. You got any proof? They ain't got no proof. They ain't oh, got no proof. <laughs> they ain't got no proof. Also, also uh, Court Bauer, their MLW's uh, like you know founder, or whatever. He's got a past of being a shady cat, man. He's, okay. he's got a really. I mean, well, let me say this: past and present of oh, being a okay. real shady cat. So. Okay. Yeah, man, I think I think he's doing this for ratings, bro, uh, okay. 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 <laughs> or for attention to try to get on somebody else's network. Right, right. <laughs> all right, so all right, we got real quick because we got <laughs> we got a meeting after this, but for the John Jones Award, we got two people. First person, first person. You, I mean, I feel like you know who this is, but Hulk Hogan gets the John Jones Award. I think I know why. I think I know. I think yeah, yeah. Yep. This mother, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> he get, he gets he gets the he gets the he gets the the he gets all three. He gets all three because because <laughs> his <laughs> punk right. ass talk about Nate Robinson. This motherfucker said <laughs> you said you said I can't believe it's, yeah. it's egregious. This is egregious. What his dude? This dude he needs to just shut the fuck up sometime, man. Just be yes. honest. With you, You're man. right. You're right. This is Nate Robinson. <laughs> Hulk Hogan implied that Betty White, 99-year-old Betty White and 95-year-old Sidney Poitier died because they were vaccinated from COVID. There you go, (laughs) y'all. There you go. But wait, wait, wait. But wait, not only that, he didn't just say this in an interview. He he went on Facebook. (laughs) He He went on his Facebook page. Uh huh. And commented on some random chicks' uh-huh. uh post and said, "Well, many directions we can go with this, Alex. But I would take the <laughs> jab for five hundred, Alex, on the post about Betty White passing away." <laughs> Hulk Hogan then says, hundred percent." And Betty and Sydney were also jabbed. They're dropping like fries, but they'll never say it, brother. On his check mark verified Facebook page. <laughs> He didn't even he didn't even remember to log into his Terry Bolea Facebook page or whatever it is. I bet you, I bet you, I bet you he one of them cats that have a Facebook page and ain't got no profile picture. He didn't log into his burner. He just oh. he, he commented on the on the on the real joint. Oh god, Hulk Hogan again. It's a repeat offender, man. We need to name an award after him. Like, for real. That's for, that's for real. You really do. You really do. Also, shout, shout out to Booker T for commenting on Hulk Hogan doing that and saying, uh, to say something that stupid about someone that's 99 years old and about to be 100, I guess she was going to live 100 more years. I guess Sidney right. Poitier had another 65 you, years left. You just forget the fact that these motherfuckers was 90 and 100 years old. What, what are you talking about, Hogan? The vaccine, really? The vaccine, you know what, man? I ain't even got it for Hulk Hogan today, man. We 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 wrote this. It, it, he's an ongoing. He's a foot ornament on the week coming for you, Cass. It's it's always something that has to do with Hulk Hogan, like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> oh God, I'm glad we did not go to that place in Orlando because he was doing. Remember, he this is when. He was disemboweled for for from WWE, and he yes. did, he had his own like comic book or some bullshit he got in Orlando. Where it was a line yeah, outside. It, they it said, was a, it was a yeah, it was a surf shop. He had he, yeah. had a, he got a spot in Orlando where he'd be selling surfboards. Yeah, and I, I talked here to the RVS. I was like, hey man, should we go in there right now and just look and just stare at his ass? <laughs> nope. And we would have been going to jail. <laughs> We've been going to jail. But speaking of uh, somebody going to jail, we have the last person uh, that was up for the John Jones's Freedom Memorial Award, and they are going to jail. 
Who is this? Sonny. Sonny. Sonny of WWF fame. You want to know why? <laughs> you want to know why? No. WWE <laughs> legend. <laughs> Ta- <laughs> WWE legend Tammy Sitch, aka Sonny, is arrested for weapons possession oh, and God. terroristic threats in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, but wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> the cops, the cops commented. This is all on TMZ Sports, so oh, it's, it's mainstream. Fred, Sonny, for real? Yeah, uh, Sonny, WWE legend Tammy Sitch, aka Sonny, threatened to kill a man with scissors before her arrest. Why? <laughs> Why, Sonny? Why? Detail of her detail of how the alleged altercation began are unclear, but in the docs. Officers say Sitch raised a pair of scissors in the air towards the victim and threatened to kill him. <laughs> I'm gonna cut your ass. You better. I'm talking. I'm gonna cut. That's how she talking about. You know that's about. I'm gonna cut your ass and fuck you up. You better. Fuck. That's how she talking about. Her throat voice. Her throat fucking fuck, fucked up. I'm gonna fucking cut your ass. Where can they find you at? <laughs> <laughs> They can find me. I'm RVF, man. You can find me at Franchise on Six. F R A S C H I C E zero six. All social media. Rated R. Where can they find you? you? You can find me on all all the social media platforms at oh, the number eight. Damn, I cut you on the number eight. Did the underscore? Yes, man. Also, make sure y'all follow us on social media at WCF Podcast on uh, uh, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We cover for you wrestling cast feeds on Facebook. Email us. We cover for you cast at gmail.com. Is there anybody more? I'm sorry. Is there anybody more of him to fall from grace than Sonny than Tammy Lynn Cinch? Like, like this shit? Fuck. It ain't, it's been going down and ain't came back up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's, she's out of here, bro. She is out of here. <laughs> Well, it all started. Okay, uh, it all started when she was just like, "Yeah, she don't mess with black dudes. Yeah, she don't well, like black yeah. dudes at all." That's where it started. That yeah. was just. It was like when, it was like when Chris Jericho started messing with Trump, and he fell off. You know what? <laughs> I ain't going. Going that. <laughs> Make sure y'all hit us up prowrestlerback.org at the website. And you know what? Before we leave, we got to bring in twenty twenty two. Right? Shout out to the boy. Shout out to the homeboy meal ticket for this one. But uh, we just got to bring we got to bring the New Year's in, right? <laughs> um, I got to get ready for this. Yeah, you got to get ready for it. You got to get ready for this one. <laughs> and, yeah. Because he, he can find some gems and like play them at the, the, the perfect time. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we got to leave y'all with this. <laughs> this is good. We coming for you, Cass. As always, Jerome Young, aka Do Jack. Don't you ever forget. He said, Hulk Hogan, I'm that nigga. And it's a preacher of New Jack and Brooke Hogan. Don't you ever forget it. Because we ain't gonna forget y'all. We out. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.